Well, Oklahoma is known for many things, but having its major rivers actually full of water year round is not one of them. Now that's changing, the Oklahoma River in Oklahoma City and the Arkansas River in Tulsa are both being strategically dammed to help create development along their banks. Steve Shaw joins us now with more on the large investments being made. Steve. Rich, the cities of Tulsa, Jinx, Muscogee Nation, and the Indian Nation's Council of Governments last month joined forces to do something many believe was long past due. Through a crystal ball looking five years ahead, this is what you'll see along the Arkansas River south of Tulsa. A monumental hurdle just cleared, something that had been talked about for decades. I'm excited for my kids and their generation to grow up here, being able to utilize the river uh, year round. Tulsa Mayor G.T. Bynum was on city council 10 years ago when leaders began an all-out effort to make a pair of low-water dams on the Arkansas River through Tulsa and Jinx a reality. But a quick history lesson. This used to be a naturally open, flowing prairie river, but it flooded every year. And, uh, you know, Tulsans from my parents' generation and older have stories of having to go and put up sandbags in Brookside and neighborhoods getting destroyed. And so the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers built Keystone Dam in the 1950s to stop uh, the, the flooding. And it's largely been extremely effective in that <laughs> regard, uh, but almost to the other extreme where it's sandbars out there instead. Tulsa gets its water from the Keystone Dam. It creates hydropower, and when it's released every afternoon, it travels through Tulsa between 10 and midnight every night. That's why the river looks so barren during the day. The first low water dam, which Tulsa financed on its own near 29th Street and Riverside, has been under construction for about two years. When it's finished, it will form a massive lake. What the cities of Tulsa, Jinx, Muscogee Nation, and the Indian Nation's Council of Governments just formally agreed to do is spend around $100 million to build that second low water dam in South Tulsa. Tulsa contributes $64 million, Jinx $16 million, Muscogee Nation just over $8 million, and the Indian Nation Council of Governments, or INCOC, will throw in $8 million in federal funds to pay for a network of nature trails. Each lake that's now going to be built will be about three miles long. Uh, so you get the most, the taxpayers will get the most bang for their buck from the length of shoreline with these two lakes being constructed in our city. When will that first low water dam there at 29th and Riverside be done, do you think? It, it will be finished this year. So, Zachariah Harjo is for, acting for secretary for of Muscogee Nation, yeah, well, which I'm operates like River Spear Casino be, on the riverbanks and nearby. This could be a real game changer for your side of the state. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I know just in general, um, when we see when there's water in the river, even when it's flooding, <laughs> it's just kind of prettier to look at. And across the board, um, there's been a number of feasibility studies conducted both by the nation and the you know, city of Tulsa and all of the regional partners. We see on average a 20 to 25 percent increase in business when there's water in the river, just regardless of what the, the, the business is, whether it's uh, retail, whether it's food. There's no Jinx doubt. Mayor Everybody Corey Jinx Box is giddy over the reality that second low water dam will create that second lake right next to his growing city of 26,000. You know, and frankly, I, 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 lived, I moved here from a river city in San Antonio, um, and I've, I've kind of grown up in and around the water, whether it's the ocean or, or river. And, you know, it's it's not rocket science or even political science. People want to gather and be around water. It's not like something like this hasn't been done before. Part of Oklahoma City's resurgence that began more than three decades ago involved damming up the North Canadian River, which created a series of lakes now known as the Oklahoma River. 
bodies of water that led to the creation of the Boathouse District, the Wheeler District, with others on the way. We're not just plunking a dam down in the Arkansas River and then hoping everything pans out. The costs that you see in that number includes shoreline stabilization, a lot of work along the shore to create amenities that will allow people to be able to utilize the new lake. And a big part of that is creating a trail system that would run all the way around the lake. You used the word game changer earlier, and there's no doubt. Everybody on the Jinx City Council, people that have lived here a long time, our staff members know that, you know, in a couple of years when they look out and see a pedestrian bridge that also serves as a dam and sees nine to 10 feet of water and all the activity and all the potential economic growth and the entrepreneurship and the businesses that don't even exist today that will exist in a couple of years, whether it's gondola rides or boat docks or <clears throat> transportation methods that we currently don't have shuttling customers from, let's say, the casino over to Jinx to the other Muskogee Nation property. All of this will create organic growth that doesn't exist. So we're looking at some incredible amount of uh, new opportunities, and it's going to benefit everyone. Mayor Bynum says it will take two years from now to get through the planning and permitting process. The second low water dam should be finished by 2027. 